person thing today, so please bear with us as we. They can't see me live though, right? Okay, good. No, they can't see you live. Okay, we're good. <laughs> oh, I'm good. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm Kim Bernardi, and I'm going to do um, some information on different Social Security benefits, uh, asset limits, and whatnot for individuals on Social Security Medicaid. And then Jan Phillips with Blick is going to go over the money management piece. Okay. Um, you have a PowerPoint handout that I gave you. I'm not going to go through the whole PowerPoint. I'm just going to hit key parts of what for money management. Okay. There's three different Social Security benefits for people with disabilities. There's Social Security Supplemental Income, which is SSI benefits. That benefit is given to an individual who's deemed disabled and has no work record. So it's a supplemental income. And the amount is $794 a month is the amount for this year. That, that Social Security benefit is impacted by um, paychecks, earned income and unearned income, which I'll go over that in just a little bit. Uh, Social Security disability adult child that's based off of a parent's Social Security. So if an individual was disabled, they're on SSI benefits, a parent became deceased, disabled or retired, then that individual, if the parent paid into Social Security, can draw off of the parent's Social Security benefit. And then the third one is Social Security disability individual. That individual has been working and paying into Social Security. So eventually they will start being able to draw off their own Social Security benefit and come off of the SSI benefit. The Social Security benefit off of the parents and off of your own is not impacted by your earned income. Except for the amount that you can earn in substantial gainful activity and lose your benefits, but we'll go over that one here in a few. OK, Social Security supplemental income. I really don't want to go over everything, but um, you have to have a qualifying disability. The main parts about this I wanted to show you was there is a resource limit of 2000 if you're an individual. So that's a big key when especially when you're doing uh, money management payee is watching the individual's asset limit. If somebody on SSI benefits is over in their resource, their asset limit, even over by $1, they weren't supposed to get their benefit for that month. So if they go several months where they're over the $2,000 asset limit, Social Security is going to come back and want all that SSI benefit money. They'll have a payback. So it's very important to watch that asset limit for them. Medicaid is also a $2,000 asset limit. So earned income, if you're on SSI, if you have earned income, it's going to affect your benefit. So the 794 a month, but somebody's making 500 a month earned income. What Social Security will do if you're just on SSI and earned income, they will disregard the first $85 of your earned income. So if somebody's earning $500 a month, and you disregard the first $85, then that would be $4.15 a month. Then they take the $4.15 of earned income and divide it in half. So that would be $207.50. So Social Security will count the $207.50 of earned income and subtract it from the $794 that you sh can get in SSI. And then that'll be your amount. So I, I have the old amount, 783. So 783 minus 207.50, then the person's check would be 575.50 on the old amount from last year. So it's important to understand when somebody is working because not everybody, when you're a payee, you're only paid from Social Security for their Social Security check, not necessarily their earned income. So if an individual chooses not to give their payee their earned 
income paychecks, so SSI checks going to fluctuate. And the payee's got to pay the bills with that amount based on what the person's earning. Does that make sense? OK, so hopefully they'll. Give their paychecks too, so that way it can be kept track of much better. Also, an individual shouldn't have their own separate savings accounts because based on what's in the payee's account, and what's in their savings account combined, they could be over their asset limit and then that'll mess, mess up their SSI benefits. Social Security will come back and get it. The other thing with SSI to be aware of is they're two months behind. So whatever you earn in May, you give your pay stubs to Social Security in June, it will show up in July on that Social Security check. So whatever you earn in May, they'll subtract it out on your July Social Security check. Any questions so far? No? Okay, there's some earned income exclusions. Um, money from an income tax refund. It's not counted as a resource right away. Usually you have about six months to do something with that money. Um, earned income tax credits. I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to go over all this because the payee, payee doesn't have to do all, all this. Uh, student earned income exclusions. If you're a student in high school, you can go till age 22. You can work. And Social Security will disregard. 1900 a month, but a yearly limit of. 7770 a year. So your SSI check, if you're a student, will not be affected. It'll stay the same amount until after you reach $7,770 for the year. Then they can start just taking out from your SSI check. OK, also Social Security benefits uh, under an income. You can receive SSI benefits and off of your own benefit. Or SSI benefits and off of a parent's benefit. If your your benefit or your parents benefit is under 794 a month, the individual will qualify. For some SSI to make up the difference to 794. So if they're getting 500 off a of parent's benefit. They're still eligible for 294 off of SSI. OK, the parents benefit will not change when you're working. The SSI still will change. They'll still disregard. They'll still make. Your income count on SSI benefits, but your 500 will stay the same. Does that make sense? OK. OK. SSI and Medicaid countable resources, anything that's cashable, anything that's a liquid asset. OK, somebody has a life insurance policy on themselves and they can cash it in. And it's twenty five hundred dollars is the cashable amount. That's an asset. It can't be that much. They'll have to cash in that life insurance policy. Okay. That's also for Medicaid as well. OK. Um, you, what you can do, you can do prepaid burials. Those don't count as assets. You can do stable accounts. Individuals can put money into their stable accounts. Back in, I believe it was 2016, the federal government came up with the ABLE Act to allow individuals with disabilities to have monies like uh, other individuals get 401ks so they can have retirement monies. So they're allowed to put up to, if they're not working, 15,000 a year into their stable account, no more than over $100,000. The stable account, they can draw money whenever they need it for whatever they need it for, even including rent, utilities, food. Um, if they're working, they're allowed 26,000 a year to put in the stable account if they're earning income. Any amount of I don't they didn't specify any of that. I know like with the Medicaid buying program and stuff, you've got to be working at least 40 hours a month. So I would assume with the stable account. 
you need to be earning a little bit more. And you can put it in your stable account and put in 26,000. So they let people who are working actually put in more. So those are some ways we can do something with the assets instead of spending them down all the time. There's exempt trust funds. The difference between an exempt trust fund and a stable account, trust funds typically, the individual can't use it for rent, utilities, food. So sometimes a stable account is a little bit better. And that also with the trust fund, you have to go and request the money, stable account, it's all online. You can switch the money over back into another account. You can have a debit card and have the money put on the debit card and they go use it anytime. There's a little differences in the between the trust and the stable account. All right, Social Security disability adult child and off of their own benefit. So if you're on the other two Social Security benefits, your Social Security check is not going to fluctuate when you're earning money. You're gonna, it's gonna stay the same. You might get a raise every year because if they do a cost of living raise on Social Security, you might get a raise in that. However, individuals need to watch how much money they earn as far as earned income. If they go over 1300 a month earned income before taxes, they can be considered meeting substantial gainful activity and eventually they can lose their Social Security check. The Social Security says, well, you're substantially gainfully employed, therefore you're not disabled anymore. You don't need your check anymore. So that's another thing we try to watch is their income unless they so want to, you know, not have the benefits anymore because some people don't want benefits. So security off of a parent's benefit and your own benefit, there is no resource limit. Yes, Ken. Just, I, mean, I know this is an issue that comes up a lot and we talk about, but so 1300 a month, like you have a pay, a month that gives like three pays, like somebody's like seasonal, it, that doesn't, they don't take that into consideration. Like, do you leave any? The question was, if somebody has three pays in a month or they're seasonal and they make a little bit more, if that'll affect their benefits, no, it won't. They'll take that into account because what they can do is take the income for the year and divide it up by 12. So, because we all get paid a couple times a year, three times. Right, it has to be consistent. It has to be consistent, substantial gainful activity. Consistently every month making over three, 1300 a month, consistent. OK. Does that answer it? Yeah. All right, good. Very good. So anyways, let me go back to Social Security benefits off of your own benefit or your parents benefit. Again, there's no resource limit or asset limit. You can have how many assets you want. However, some of those individuals have Medicaid, so we now we got to watch the $2,000 for the Medicaid. OK, if they're working, they could be in the Medicaid buy in program. The Medicaid buy-in program uh, this year, I believe they're allowed. I'm, I'm running through here. They're allowed $12,555 in assets in their account if they're in the Medicaid buy-in program. So it's very important to know what the individual's benefits are. Even as money management and pay, it's, it's very important to know if somebody's in the Medicaid buying program because they can have that asset limit. These should be in the, put in the ISP. Every benefit the person has should be in the ISP. So that way people can look at it and go, oh, Medicaid buy-in, we're fine. Okay, not in the Medicaid buy-in, we're a little over. We need to get back down to 2000. Make sense? So that's what I was going to go over because I just wanted to really spe specify, you know, the asset limits. We need to watch the asset limits, the difference with SSI, SSDI, Medicaid, Medicaid buy-in. So now I'm going to hand it over to Jen on the money management piece. I'm not good at PowerPoint, so I made a little pretty handout. That's just uh, basically what we're going to go over real quick. Well, I talk really fast, so please feel free to say slow down. 
Um, um, I, one of the things that Black Clinic wants you to know is that we understand that every client has individual needs and requirements, so, and for their financial welfare. We do not lump everybody into the same category. We do have general rules in place that we follow, but everybody has their own financial plan, just like we all do as in our own personal world. Um, Social Security, what we do is, so what I did is we broke down what we do and what our services offer. Some of our clients, like Kim had said, is they opt out of certain things or they don't want us to do certain things, um, and that's fine. Um, we just, this is what we do for basically anybody who wants everything. Um, Social Security, we originally applied to be the representative payee. Um, Lick has been very fortunate that we've received our own Social Security representative that calls me every single Wednesday morning, um, and it, that's very rare. Um, so we kind of got lucky somehow. Um, we just first SSI and SSDI. We pay our bills first, groceries, household, and personal spending as appropriate. As you all know, everybody's required to have $75 minimum personal spending a month. They can use that to pay their cell phone bill such as a luxury such as that, but they don't, but they are required to have at least $75. If that means after their Social Security minus $75, they do not have enough to pay a bill, that bill cannot be paid. Um, make sure each client is receiving all their benefits they're entitled to. As Kim said, we, we make sure everybody has SSDI. If the SSDI is not enough to cover their SSI, or then we get them SSI. If they don't have their wages, we make sure Every benefit out there that we can get for that person, we try to get. Um, we do the interviews for the SSI to switch to a work record or work history from themselves or their parents. Um, we do the interviews to apply for death benefits as parents, for their parents if appropriate. Um, we, we report our trusts and burials to Social Security. Um, we do all the yearly Social Security paperwork, so you will sometimes be seeing questions from me about medical and doctor's appointments. We do not ask those questions up front or normally unless Social Security is asking for them for some reason um, because we aren't concerned with their, I mean, we're concerned with their medical side, but we're not as much as we are to their financial being. Um, and Social Security requires CDRs and disability update reports. Um, Ohio De Department of Jobs and Family Services. We do um, apply for food stamps for every client that is not um, placements. Make sure they have food stamps, even if they get the $19, heck, that buys milk and bread and that covers it. Um, the food stamp cards are kind of an issue that we're having. Um, I don't know if you know, but the state of Ohio has gotten a new company to issue food stamp cards, and they do not, in our, their systems, recognize representative payees. It is a pain in the behind to get um, a food stamp card if you are not that person, and if you get, if you, when you call, you have the wrong rep on the phone. So that's why sometimes we go back to the client and say, oh, can you, can you call and can you get the card? We do use only Blix address, so the cards come to our place so we can um, track them, follow them, and make sure everybody does have one. Um, review current medical benefits and make sure they're appropriate coverage. We do try to get MBIWD. Um, we get make sure the QMB, the ABD, whatever benefits they can get for their Medicaid to cover the most health insurance. Um, yearly. Quick, I'm yeah. sorry. QMB and SLMB are Medicaid um, programs that if the person qualifies as far as the income limit, their Medicare premium will be paid through Medicaid and it won't come out of their Social Security checks. Sorry. Um, and we do their yearly and interviews for ODGFS for food stamps. Um, we do um, like the username and passwords for wages. The reason is we pull them so we can report them to SSI and ODJFS um, because that makes their benefits accurate and we don't like paying things back if we don't have to, especially food stamps. Um, so we report wages every month on a massive spreadsheet um, and then we do use their bills, to, their wages to pay the bills if it's needed because they don't, their SSI doesn't cover everything. 
So when a client says, can I keep my wages? We look at that client's benefits to make sure that they're receiving SSI or SSDI or whatever they're receiving to make sure that they can cover what they need. And then if we say, yeah, keep your wages, we just need the pay stubs. That's because they have enough with what they're receiving from Social Security. Yeah, I have a question about that. Sure. So if, if you have somebody that has had their direct deposit already into their payee account, mm -hmm. is there something else that they need to be doing? Like he's through windfall industry, so I don't think there's necessarily like a pin. Uh, we usually log into the user, like the website and try to transfer it. Windfall, okay. we can send over a direct deposit form. We do have contacts to at all the places. Alicia okay. does the wages, that's why I'm glad Senator. Um, and she pulls them from the from windfall and they oh, send us a okay so that you're all set with them mm -hmm. then, okay um i'm pretty sure we sent everything to all their medina county clients okay. to their employers to make sure they're transferred there might have been one or two that we don't have yet um sometimes the uh, employers don't transfer them as fast as we want them to um but they will be transferred um, tax returns, tax return. I know that is the weirdest thing you're going to hear all day. I love taxes. This is my happy season. So bring them on. It's super fun. Um, and we do do that for all our clients I if they want us to. We want the access to the portal because we need the W 2s. Yes, we do need the W 2s. A lot of our clients um, want to go pay for it. We do it for free. It's there's two of us that for some reason we fist fight over them. It's weird. Um, we do open stable accounts for our clients. Um, we also can, if they have a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money, we do suggest a CFMF trust or another kind of uh, master trust, master Medicaid trust. They um, they are a little more stringent on their rules. Um, and sometimes we do say that trusts, um, if a person is getting up there in age, it's probably not the best mm -hmm. thing because everything goes back to the government, which why I understand and I agree with. I don't know if that's what we want, you know, if that's what the client wants to do, if they can spend it, spend it. Otherwise, for the record, all stable, all trust accounts go back to the government. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So you said you guys can, you guys can actually open a stable account for mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, when they want to, they have too much too many assets, do you automatically put money in there or do you have to have somebody request you to put money in there? Both. Both. Okay. Both. So we do send out notifications that say, hey, I'm moving money, just FYI, sending money to the trust. And if we've had the initial request to open one. So yes, once correct. we've had their initial request to open it and ongoing, we'll say we're at that limit again. We need to put money in there. Okay. Now, do you also send monthly ledgers to the SSA so they can also keep track? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, you will receive a ledger every month from us, usually around the first, second, or third of the month, um, depending where you fall in the alphabet. Uh, you'll receive a ledger in your email. Where <laughs> the client falls in the alphabet? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, I have a form that you'll send us for a request of funds to their requesting No, email. just shoot us an email. We have the um, generic payee ship email, which is worked by the whole department. There's seven girls that work it. Um, or if you have a favorite rep, Alicia's going to kill me for this. You can send it directly to that person. Um, I just didn't know. You passed that. You had to fill up one that I worked on. You had to fill up on request and then email. We have. Um, we know and document every account. Um, okay. So we would say, Susie, send us a request for Billy's money, fifty dollars. Send them. Send them out fifty bucks or to who? And we always write back to who, to where because um, a lot of people don't like it to go to the individual client. They like it for somebody, for somebody. So we send it there or they want $50 to go to the day program. We just need an email or something or call. Okay. We're pretty, um, we're there from 8.30 to four every day. Um, and there's there are seven reps that would answer the phone. So you could get a different rep every time, but um, we do have notes on every account. So you can, everybody can see what's going on. Um, burials. Um, we do have a couple contacts that we we can set up a generic burial for you. When I say it's generic, you say you would say we would ask you how much, 
you would say it's a 3000. I have $3,000 and I want a, a burial with no payment plans. So we would set up a generic burial plan that can be moved to any funeral home anywhere. Um, simple, quick, I have it done in 15 minutes actually. Um, and the burials are set up so they're prepaid, irrevocable, accepted by Medicaid and Social Security. If you want, if a family wants to be more involved in the process, we have other contacts for that suggestion too, or they can go to any funeral home and set up a prepaid irrevocable, I need to say that word 50 times, irrevocable burial plan. If it is not irrevocable, Medicaid will make you cash it out. It is a cash asset. Um, so however you want to do it, if, if they want to do it, say they only have a $3,000 burial and they decided they wanted a solid gold casket all of a sudden, fine, we can add, we can do that too. Um, so we put a spot in here of what we need from the SSAs um, to help us out to make our jobs easier. Um, because a lot of the rules have changed and they change every single day and they change per county and they change per person that's requesting it, to be honest. Um, so one of the things is respite. Um, do we pay a respite provider for um, room and board or just board or just household items or anything or not at all? It's different per SSA. It's different per circumstance. It's different per client. It's just different. So when someone moves into respite, if you could let us know, are we paying something? What are we paying? Because a lot of providers do not. They do try to slip one past us sometimes. So like, hey, they agreed to pay $500. The client did. The client's not capable of making those decisions. So then we come back to the SSA. And so we would just if you could just tell us in advance what's going on, that'd be awesome. Um, if someone goes to a hospital developmental center locked up, they're deceased or their waiver suspended for any manner. Um, if you could tell us because we have to stop billing and that's that's cool. Um, we just need to know uh, we were notified. Thank God we knew before this, but a year later that someone had died. We knew, but a, a year later they finally suspended the waiver. You like I'm just that's just my you get it. OK, just tell us what's going on so we can suspend things so we can let everybody know Medicaid, Social Security. Everybody needs to know if they're in the hospital for more than 30 days, if they're in their lockup for more than 30 days, if they are in a lockup for 60 days, but they're allowed to leave during the day. That's different. There's different rules that we have to follow. Can I ask a question? Sure. So if they're in a developmental center for a short period of time and the waiver is suspended, mm -hmm. but they still have their apartment and stuff and their bills need paid, you still take care of all that even yes. though you can't bill. Yes, Correct. yes, there's no problem with doing that. We just need to know like the day that they went in because there's stuff that we do with the bills that we get and the way that we process things in the system. We will be billing for those things if we don't have a date and we don't put a like a pause suspension date on our spreadsheet, our system will be billing out for that. And then, you know, we don't have a way to stop it if we don't have a date that says, hey, they're in there. We will just put it as a do not bill until you tell us they're out. We'll still do the work, but we just won't bill for it. And we also have cable bills that are $300 a month because they like it and that's cool. But if they're in lockup for 60 days, we can put that on hold. Like, why are they paying a $300 cable bill for nobody to watch it? Um, those kind of things like that we'd want to we, we need to look at. Um, we do send the monthly bank ledgers to whoever requests them. Um, Kim has requested them for every Medina SSA, so you will be receiving them at the first of the month for the ones that we had in August. It is moving into like what month we're we moving into. We're moving into September, so you'll receive those at the beginning of October. Are those sent to the individual contact or guardian also, or are we still? Not unless you, off? if you want us to, we can. If you do not request it, we won't. Okay. So we can do 50, we can do 50 people. We don't, it's not a big deal. We just need to know who. Okay. So um, you need to know what individuals 
families or individual wants a copy if and then you also send it to the SSA as well. Yes, on the application, some families did write yes. On the initial application and those will automatically go to the family and the Medina SSA. Okay. If they did not put it on there, then we wouldn't know if they request it. We can change it again. Shoot us an email or call us. We'll fix it. Um, and I'm sorry. sorry. And what will let the residential provider agencies, if they are getting to their limit, they'll let us know, like, hey, you guys need to do a send out or yes. they will actually notify us. Yes. Okay. Um, I do have to say that during the massive amount of stimulus money that we received, we weren't as fast as we normally are because <laughs> that was stupid. But um, like the amount of it just is crazy for a minute. It, it, on the stimulus, just so you know, um, they don't they disregard it for the first for a year when you receive the stimulus check as far as an asset or an asset. Yeah, but they just kept coming. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But now like the ones from last year, the year is up. So you still got to want, you know, so you kind of got to watch their assets. Some people got work hazard bonuses on their paychecks in addition to stimulus money. So then their wages were more, which just increased it even more. So we had to look and see what was really a stimulus money, what was really wages. Did we really have to report the hazard money, which we didn't, but it was still extra money in their account. So and it was, now the child money is coming. Yeah, now the child things are coming. It's, yeah. it's a fun time. Um, ISPs, we do need the ISPs. I'm sure you all know this. Um, we do have in our in our the ISPs. If you could tell us what the client is allowed and not allowed, we would not bother you as much as we bother you. Um, if you say do not give them more than $75 ever, period, don't do it. We won't. Unless they ask, then we're going to bother you. If you say give them whatever they want, as long as their bills are paid, I don't care, leave me alone. Happy with that too. Just tell us. Um, other payees, we do need to know the other payees so we can send the utility bills for the other portion of their thing. We do not accept other payees money to pay the full bill. That is their responsibility. We will pay the portion of our that we are required to. So let me ask you this. If if you guys are receiving the bill and the roommate has another payee, do you send a copy of the bill to the other payee? Mm -hmm. We'll send a copy. We break it down all pretty. Susie owes this. Billy owes this. We paid Susie. You pay Billy. Um, pay stubs, they're important because we have to report them. Um, and Social Security actually yelled at us because we were two pennies off on reporting somebody. So we do need the pay. We do need the pay stubs. Um, re now receipts. This is another <laughs> we get into an argument all the time. I understand that the client's not required by the county board all the time to turn in receipts. Social Security requires it. Everybody and they come in and look at every receipt as if we're thieves and that's fine because that's their job. Um, so we ask even if it's a polar pop, we do ask for those receipts. We don't get them all the time. That's fine. We just need. If you if they have them, send them. We're happy. We have a bag like this of someone's um, receipts. They just shove them in a bag. It's super fun to just flatten out and scan, but we do it. You mean receipts of any spending money? That any need? spending money. Anything. Anything. They purchase? Anything. Either Social Security checks. Yeah. So we do ask for, especially when it comes up with large, like large amounts. If they're asking for five hundred dollars for a TV, we we really want that All receipt right. to back it up. Can I ask a question? Sure. So if you have someone who has a provider that's kind of helping them to budget what they like, you the person that you have with me, you're going to be sending a check to the provider, and they're going to be helping this person budget it. So if he gets like $20 a week just for spending, can they sign like can they have a receipt? We don't we're not as crazy. OK, we're not going to bother them okay. and shut them down. We, we will. We won't bother them. He much. might take that and go like you said, we would buy a coffee and a, we would like it. OK, if he doesn't send it, that's fine. But if he's calling asking for two or three hundred dollars, then sometimes when that money gets kind of big, say $1,000, we're going to stop and go, we've given you five, $200 to spend money. Um, we need something. And, and and when they start, and sometimes the clients are like, why well, throw them away, which is fine. Write it down on a piece of paper, a napkin. 
I don't care and just scribble your signature that you purchased it, you did it, send it to us. We'll, we'll accept it. We just need something to so show the Social Security auditors who are not friendly. Um, the hey, we didn't steal the money. He's he really, really spent this money. Um, right there. Hi. So folks that have triple A cards that they want you to load, uh -huh. do you not get to see what they spent that on? So they wouldn't really necessarily have to give you a receipt for that stuff. Um, if if the if the bank ledgers come to us, uh -huh. we would see it. Do they? I we only have we. We just have one that we just started. I changed the address on it. I'm hoping. I haven't seen them yet, though. Um, we have two new ones that we're turning on for September, okay. so we'll find out on that. I know other banks, like the third sends us the statements. Huntington sends us their statements. That's acceptable. Okay. So I see that they went to Bell stores 15 times and bought 50 Bowler Pops. That's okay. cool. So AAA sends ledgers? The banks, like their, um, your credit card receipt. Okay. So that, that, yeah, that's what okay. I was going to say. We have a lot of our clients with AAA cards, but we access their cards and their ledgers online. Oh. She does the reconciliation. Nice. So she can, you know, you have to every month, like, yeah, you just well, shoot. So piggyback off of that is the, the receipts. So your the triple A doesn't actually that ledger doesn't actually show you what they purchased. Uh, so where that you purchased. need to you don't need to have that information. My understanding is you need a receipt for absolutely everything that they purchased, especially if it was on a triple A card outside of their amount of money. If it's a big item over fifty dollars, the county board I'm pretty sure this is, the state rolls is fifty dollars. We need the receipt. If it's a fifty dollar item, okay. um, but if they use the card at, like I said, um, Bell stores for Polo Pops, if I you'll see that on the AAA account, that's fine. Yeah, so, where they purchased yeah. so the it. Yeah, time. sometimes I don't want to know, you know, like, but if they send us that, that's that's cool too. Okay, so for confirmation of what you're, what you're saying, each time I get a receipt from Joe Smith, you know, I'm going to send over a copy of those receipts to you or just yes. the ledger for the AAA. Either or, please. Okay. If it's a big purchase item, please send us the receipt so we can track it too. Sure. There's a lot of times I'm sure you get calls that say, I purchased a TV, it's broke. Can I have the receipt back? Mm -hmm. we, oh, yeah. we receive a lot of those. Um, units, we do ask for 25 units a month after the waiver. Um, and the reason we do so high is because we, we kind of estimated where we're at. We, a lot of clients don't use it. A lot of clients use more than that. So until we know somebody, we always say 300. It's just, that's what we say for a year, which is 25 a month. Um, I understand that a lot of other payees weren't paying cell phones. We do. Um, so we can either pay their cell phones or we can give them the funds for the cell phones, but we need their username and access or however they pay the bill online. Boost, I think it's just a pin mm -hmm. and their cell phone number and the amount. When we say the amount, we pay what they tell us to pay. If they say $50, we pay $50. If it is $51, I don't know if you know this or not, but Boost will shut them off. So we pay the 50 because we don't know and there's no it, it just pops up with, hey, pay a generic fee, which is what we do. Um, medical bills, um, Alicia and I are both medical billers. That's where we've been in our most of our lives. We'll not pay a medical bill. We will call them and yell and scream and get that bill paid because it's Medicaid. They should not have a bill. So send it to us because that makes us happy too. We actually won't give those to our staff. We like to do <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. We know the rules. You can't build a Medicaid client. Right. And Medicaid covers everything. Yes. So let me just so just to reiterate. So as money management, you guys money management will handle ready terms for job and family services yeah. for Medicaid. Real quick, the Medicaid redeterminations, you will receive a copy. It is a courtesy copy. We handle it. Just FYI, Social Security, you will receive a courtesy copy. 
if you want me to shut those off because we do have clients that we shut them off because okay because they call and then they call and say oh my god oh my god oh my god we we shut them off because we don't it's easier just we handle it if you see something we handle it send it to us my favorite thing about okay. <laughs> we, we try to make sure everything's covered financially they shouldn't worry about it so and like you also said that if somebody's on ssi and all of a sudden their parent becomes disabled you'll assist with the interviews the interviews mm -hmm. to change them from ssi to the parents benefit as well yes i did receive a notice today someone's parent is retiring i need to know that kind of stuff we'll call we'll get the benefits we'll fix it just you have to let us know and that's it is there any questions holidays are upcoming what happens when an individual wants a large amount four or five hundred dollars to buy gifts for family mm -hmm. members receipts necessary for all the gifts I any we prefer everything okay. if they say they're but anything over fifty dollars value for sure so but basically it, send a request for a large check is sent out to whom where what how and okay. yeah and we'll we'll get it out yeah. um our turnaround time is 24 hours um i'm kind of a little crazy so um it's done or let me know or let alicia know i we actually are changing little positions around they i don't know i gave me a new title from supervisor to manager and alicia's the supervisor now so she does outgoing i do incoming um but they know i'm a little crazy so i'm still in control <laughs> um <laughs> but we our turnaround time and she's just like me 24 hours is in and out the door all bills are paid within 24 hours or you will be notified hey billy bob has no money and can't pay his portion of the electric bill what do you want us to do how do you want us to handle this Regarding stable accounts, do you recommend trying to keep that sweet spot around eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars, or do you, you know, because I think when it gets up to that eight seventeen eighteen hundred dollar level, it gets at least for me a little nervous for my son. I don't like it up that high because his pay stubs tend to fluctuate. I'd rather kind of keep it down. I don't panic until I see two thousand. To be okay. honest, um, anything over two thousand is where they start. Everybody says, "Oh well, I hold on." 1900 I'm like oh okay it's kind of ugly after two we stop and go what's going on the last question I have is I love the idea of not having to fill out a form for request for funds <laughs> um we always we know we go through the SSA first how would you prefer we do request for funds from residential provider services would you like us to email the SSA and then just the SSA email you or would you like like one email where I ask the SSA and you, and then the SSA can get approval. What would you prefer? Both one email. Okay. That way we can see everybody's. Everything's on one. Okay. Yeah. And to be honest, if we have a new client and the information is kind of spelled out to us on the ISP and we set the account up correctly, like if you know this client is constantly asking for, you know, $100 every two weeks, if it's set that in there that they can have it and we know that, we don't. We won't question it. Like if you send the request in, it's noted we're allowed to have it. We have the documentation. We will just process it and send it out until we're told otherwise, or we get a new ISP to send it. Question on stable accounts. Yeah. If you know that somebody is always going to be over each month, and as far as the stable accounts, you can also do automatic deposits mm -hmm. from the account mm -hmm. is that something you guys can set up if we know that or do you just have to every month go in there and send it over if they're over we can set it up you can set up automatic we can do it automatic um i i go back to the you know all that money's going back to the state and why, why not jack the cable bill up to get 300 dollars? do they like movies do they like a new phone i that's just the way I right, think. But, but a lot of individuals have all that mm -hmm, we can and do they that don't want to spend all their money and they also want to make sure their future because if something happens with residential or with um, their housing voucher or this or that, they're going to need money for rent and, you know, no, or right, they live with right, their right. parents and something happens and, and then, then now they have to go place. pay rent and they don't right. have enough money. So, you right. know. No, we can definitely do that. Okay. So you can we do, do that a lot. We an automatic. Mm -hmm. okay. Most of all of our um, stagnant accounts are set up on memorized. So like our rent is stagnant. It's it just goes out in the first of the month. Our 
personal spending, if it's 75 every month, it just goes out. If burials, it just goes out. Um, okay. Anything stagnant, it just goes. So anything that's like that, we are happy to set up real quick. It click like it's done. Any other questions? If you have any thoughts or opinions on things we can change or improve, let us know that too, because we like to improve. Anything else? I guess the only thing that just keeps coming to my head is you guys have an individual I work with, and he's um, not very easy to deal with when it comes to his earned income. And like, I won't even know that he gets a job sometimes. Um, he might have a job. And so, like, right now, his earned income is close to the fee, and then his earned income, we try to do our best to get, you know, um, but uh, he's uh, very, um, to say, he's very. Paranoid about things sometimes, and sometimes he just finds it out and doesn't want to share things. Uh, <laughs> very private about things. We can know because she worked with them. Um, so, do you have any specific techniques, or maybe this is better, something we can talk about individually about special techniques that may be more helpful to get him? Uh, is it SSI? Or yeah, it's SSI. Uh, yeah. So we need the wages. Correct. Um, and it's it's their employability is not a it's something which he tries, but it's never long term. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to think he has the ability to have long term employment, but uh, I don't think he, he just doesn't. <laughs> you know, but like I don't even know, unless there's an OOD case open and they're re involved in him getting a job, but, like, I, like I didn't know. You know, like here. We have there. a lot of those actually. Um, we have a couple of those actually. They, um, we just do our best. We report it, and then sometimes Becca, Social Security, calls and says, yo, and she's like, I'm fixing it. and the IRS reports to them every um, quarter, okay. so they, actually, they catch it faster than we would. Um, sometimes, which happens, um, I will not do his taxes. <laughs> like, wait, I've gotten 16 uh, W-2s before, and I'm like, what is happening? Just yeah. kidding. Well, but, I guess um, the other concern is, like, then your SSI check's going to be less, mm -hmm. and then how do you make, make his bills? We, if he counts on all that. Well, well and once again, fortunately, his SSI check is never that low. Don't because, be uh, he just, as I said, I mean, I, as long as I've worked with him for a week and a half and had a job, but it's, it's usually it catches up. Um, if we do see a pattern of that, what we do is we actually stop telling him exactly what's in his account. We kind of start lying a little and saying, oh, there's, if there's 300 bucks, we leave a cushion because we know. Next month he's going to get a job, Social Security is going to catch it if we don't, and then he's not going to have the money. So we kind of say, you have no money. And he's like, oh, well, darn it. And he actually has $300 to cover next month's rent because we know better. I was going to say, the only thing I think, since I've worked with him, the only thing I think we've benefited from is I don't think he's had any contact with like, the society. It's his grandmother that typically will make requests on his behalf or whatever else. And then, so we've been kind of shit, I guess, because okay. I don't think he's ever I've never heard of him looking or asking to pay you for anything specifically. Okay. I don't know why that is. The information's all in the ISP. He's very. You've done it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he changed that. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, good. We 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 kind of learn that after a while, and we start um, stashing it. Not stashing it, but leaving a cushion for ourselves in his account. Yeah. Um, because that does happen. I think a lot of employers that we've worked with in the past too that they know that hey we've got a new client um, here's yours here's a pay stub like we get lucky sometimes that way too and they'll let us know that they have somebody that we don't know is working there we just use all the resources that we have to do the best we can in this situation <laughs> and hope they're the the minute <laughs> of the rest happens so individuals say individuals you said if either social security check they're supposed to get so much spending money a month now what if they keep their paychecks do you still have to either social security check give them spending money or since they have paychecks you don't have to because you need you to pay the bills have, you don't have to technically you like to yeah you try to you try to yeah we don't, but technically you're right we don't have to okay Any other questions? This is exciting to know everybody and get to meet you. So we're excited to work with you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Ha. Kasih buat saya nyari.